Good evening, guys. Got the girls here. I'll show you what I just picked off of the classifieds for free. This looks like a 13, maybe, ish head djembe. Person who uh, had it just gave it to me for free. I had to just drive and go get it. Um, really nice djembe, but it's only got one problem whole head split. Looks like we got a pretty typical, really nice actually, uh, djembe. I have a whole bunch of uh, old drum heads left over. You know, these guys are really, really old. Looks like somebody's been licking it. I have a whole bunch of these old heads here that aren't really good for anything else. Not the best shape, but for something like this, yeah, let's see what this guy sounds like with the uh, 80 year old drum head on. I got two different ones, both of these are 16 inch. This drum, I think, is like 13, so I should have an inch and a half, maybe. I hope I have some clearance at least, so we'll figure out pretty quickly if this will work or not. Let's get a little bit of a better look at this drum. Looks like it has a serial number in there, 12017. Looks like fairly decent quality, actually. We gotta undo all these diamonds and all this stuff. And we gotta get this top hoop counter hoop off. Probably gonna be the part of the job where I fast forward. Seems like a pretty good quality djembe actually. I'm very surprised. And I like that this first row of diamonds is super down low. It makes things a lot easier to okay double you need to go away. We have the knot. This is where it's like there's a hoop and this string goes all the way back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way back here. And the idea is, is that you tighten this when before you, you know, right after you put the head on. It's gonna take a long time. You're asking yourself, Nolan, is that really necessary? And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> it is because there's unfortunately just no other way to get the hoop off. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and pull, pull, and pull some more. Oh, yay, that is the drum head. Yes, this is the counter hoop. steel welded counter hoop. First things first, finish here because there is goat hair everywhere now. Look how small that is. We might get lucky. I'm not sure though. We're finally, finally done with this part of the process. And as long as that took, oh man, can you imagine how long it's gonna take? Get those back on. Let's get this guy is pretty nice, but we can get this looking better. A beautiful day. Check out the view. This is day two. I've taken everything off the djembe. And as you can see, it's a little bit dirty. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and sit myself down in the nice sunshine here. In this bucket, I got a little bit of just some warm water and a cloth. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wipe this guy down. up this guy here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some of this beeswax wood conditioner. It's not pure beeswax. It's got a couple of other chemicals in it to kind of like uh, preserve and to soften up the beeswax and whatever but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, apply this to the entire surface of the djembe just to make sure that we're all set and um, 
that'll probably only take about 20 minutes to soak in and then we'll be ready to put the head back on. I might do a different product for the bearing edge, but we'll get to that later. waxing the entire drum. It's got to sit for a little while now. I've done the inside as well. Look at that shine. But anyway, I've done the inside and out. This has got to sit for maybe like 20 minutes or so. And then I'll be ready to wipe off and put some wood mojo up on the bearing edge here. While I'm waiting for the djembe to dry, I have this old calfskin head here. Surprisingly, it's still feels like it's got a little bit of oil left in it. Um, yeah, before I slap this bad boy on, I gotta clean it up. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a very, just this damp cloth and just get a little bit of moisture onto that stain there. Uh, and I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of a rough side of a sponge. See if I can get that paint, paint spot off. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this head just by Going at it here with a sponge. 70 plus years of crap. Strum head. That guy's all cleaned up now. I'm hoping that this isn't mold. You know, like I said, we won't know until we put it on. Now here we are at the kitchen sink. Here is our drum head ready to be soaked. Just cool cold water. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start Soaking this guy up, gonna get a nice, loose, pliable head. While that's happening, here they are. And we're gonna be putting this bad boy on. This is gonna be great fun. Put this timer on five minutes. Starting to get a little bit more flexible. It's not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Five minutes later. like that. There we go. Wooden flesh hoop. Maybe we can use this beer bottle here as a counterweight. Just something to weigh it down so that everything's under the water there. So I'm going to see how well it cuts now. I want to get to this tear and just remove that. It cuts pretty easy actually, so that's a good sign. See how that tear goes that way? Make sure that, that, doesn't, that doesn't get in our way a little later. That should be okay now. It looks actually kind of okay. We're just about ready to go here. We just need it to be a little bit softer. Right, so this has been soaking for maybe 20 minutes. And it's still pretty hard. I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer. I don't know, another half hour or so. Just for however long it needs to soak in order for it to get nice and truly flexible. In the meantime, we could go ahead and look at this bearing edge here. Following the recommendations from Worldwide Drums, you can put shea butter on here to protect the drum, but I don't have shea butter. What I do have, however, is some wood mojo, or good old friend. And I think this will do primarily the exact same job, so while I'm at it here, bearing edge here. It'll help keep that bearing edge nice and supple and smooth and everything like that. And also has the added benefit of smelling amazing. I love wood mojo. Now it's been an hour almost and as you can see this has really softened up quite a bit. The parts that were tucked under the flesh hoop are still quite hard but they're no near as bad as they were and it's not that big of a deal that those are quite hard because we're not going to use them anyway. Now that the skin is ready to go, it's wet, it's not super soaked or anything like that but I'm just going to give it a quick toweling off. I'm just going to move these guys out a little bit here because it'll make our lives a little easier in a minute. Cool. Do you want to 
center this guy in the middle here, somewhat there. This is the tricky part. We need to fold over, and there's not a lot. Put this on, and we just start feeding this through because we don't have a lot of excess skin, unfortunately, but that's okay. These things, it's all part of the journey. Improvising and finding solutions. Get all this head on here. We need as much as we can get on that side, I, th I reckon. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is uh, just cut a couple holes here. There and there. Then I got some string here, like a shoelace. And I'm just gonna go ahead and feed that through. Then, just on there, like that, we should have a pretty good, pretty good frame. Then this guy, put this on our drum. Okay. Okay, so now that I've got all this taken care of, I will be starting to tie my first First, there is my first guy here. Then this will line up with the first knot. There, our first one. Then I'm going to take another shoelace here. And on the opposite side of the drum, just hold up this guy here. There, just a simple knot. That will make our lives so much better. And there we go. Now it's just a matter of slowly threading this all through and working our way around the drum. starts. We have to try and get this head flat as possible. And the way we do that is that we just kind of go around a little bit of the drum, a little at a time, very loosely, gathering up slack. So we just kind of slowly feed. Just try a little Little by little. So we're starting to get close. Just make sure that all of these guys are down. But let's just do another little tightening. Okay, now that we're finished with these, we don't need these anymore. Lightly pull where we can. All right, so now we're just gonna work our way slowly around the edge of the drum and try to work out the creases and stuff. That I've been going around maybe three, four times just slowly taking more and more slack and correcting where I can and trying to get rid of wrinkles where I can and stuff like that. And just keeping it, trying to keep it as even as possible. I took as many wrinkles out as I could, but the skin is so thin, I think they're gonna keep coming back no matter what I do, but most, the majority of them are gone. A pair of scissors and 
We are gonna find a place to cut. Even and letting it dry till tomorrow. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck that rope down through one of these holes here. One here, for example, will work. I'm just gonna thread that through there just so it's a little bit more secure. I'm just gonna wind this around the drum a couple times. shabby. So now the next part, we're going to wait for this to dry completely. It's probably going to take a couple days. And then after that, we are going to tune it. Okay, so here is day three. I let the djembe head relax for an entire day. And you can really hear how pitch has really dropped significantly. So I think today's the day we start doing some a uh, little bit more tuning. These are quite tight, but I want to just do one more time just to get this really nice and uh, tightened down. It looks actually really nice. The rim is it's not like perfect, but it is really, really close. And um, I think that's all I can ask for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go outside. It's another really nice day outside. I'm going to start really bearing down I think on the stick and as soon as that's done and everything's looking good then we're gonna start the Maui weave. Well, moment of disappointment. The old skin, try as hard as I might, the last, right before, the very last tightening, slipped under the flesh hoop. See that? It's just a tad too thin here. Oh man. That's a bummer. Oh, that's so annoying. So now I know to next time, probably not to cut the underside here so short, because I could see it was poking through and it was getting dangerously close, but. Well, I'll have to start the whole process all over again, I guess. So, I've got all the ropes off. And before I take this guy off, uh, let's just look at the damage here and let's find out what went wrong. As you can see, most of the head looks actually pretty good on this side. We had plenty of room to go, we had quite a big margin, but then we started to see closer to this side exactly where the problem was. Now in terms of the skin's integrity and stuff, it actually looks like it fit up with the beading very, very well. Matter of fact, 
This is very promising and very good, but this side started to slip a little. And I saw that actually before we started. And what happened was is that this guy here just slipped right off the counter hoop, which is unfortunate. But lesson for next time then I guess is wait with the trim. Don't cut it as short, cut it a little high. On the other hand, if I can get all the next head like this, because this part's like rock hard. This was really held in place quite well. If I can get the next head on, which does have a lot more skin on it, not trim it, maybe do the folding technique in the next one, then I think we'll be in a lot better shape. It's a shame, it was a really good head too.
good I think it's not perfect but good enough cool right. let's get this bad boy outside so this is the next day everything's looking good and tight so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do Molly weave and then I think this guy will be ready to go. Okay, so the very first thing we gotta do, we gotta knot this guy off. Once we have a knot there, then we can start doing the molly weave. So this is where I left off yesterday. And I just brought the excess rope down, wrapped it around, and then I knotted it off here. I just held it in place with two of the really tight verticals. I'm gonna go ahead and just clamp off this entire part right here and then I'm going to tie the knot so this way there's no risk of, of anything getting loose here. It's all being held in place, see? We're going to undo, going to undo this little knot here. Okay, and with everything loose, This guy. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a pretty simple knot just in there somewhere. There. So I'm just gonna go like that. Just to make sure that all this is tied down really well. we will need of the ice creams. Now onto the molly weave itself. The very first thing that we need to do is just gather up our excess rope and pull it through a loop right under where we tied our knot. Next thing we need to do is find a set of verticals to create our first weave. We want to locate a pair of ropes that run parallel to each other, but each one goes through a different loop in the bottom hoop. We bring the loose end of the rope up and go under each of these two verticals. Pull the rope tight and low. Now we bring the loose end back over the second rope and under the first rope of the vertical. Pull through the excess. Now pull it tight to form the first weave. I actually have made a small mistake here. I should have also gone under this rope too. This is because technically this is part of the first rope of our vertical pair, since we doubled back with the excess rope when we tied our knot earlier. But that's okay, we end up fixing it later. Now it's really easy to find our next set of verticals. It's just every pair of two ropes going forward all the way around the drum. We just keep repeating the same process. We just keep going under two, back over one, under again, and pull. What this does is forces the ropes to cross each other, which in turn pulls on the head and tightens it. In this way, we can just keep going until you go all the way around the whole drum. Gradually, this will put more and more tension on the head, pulling the counter hoop down and stretching the skin tighter.
This is how African drums have been tuned for a long, long time. Pretty ingenious. This is the last pair here. And then we're gonna lock off the drum. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come up behind here. Right here. So now we've got the last knot, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to put the rest of the rope under there so that the, the rope stays in place and the knots don't undo themselves. Because so we're just going to keep it here for now. I don't want to tighten it anymore until another two weeks or so. So we're just going to do this. Just like we would tying another knot. But instead of tying a new knot, what we're going to do is we're just going to feed the rope down here now, through there, and bring it down here, see? And then, just wind it around the drum. Just pick any one you want to look stylish. You put it in here. sufficient to hold it in place. It's just a nice little way to just keep it out of the way for now. And that's it. This guy sit for a couple weeks before I tune up anymore. In the meantime, I'm gonna put this little cover on him. And we're all set. Good morning, Indigo. Good morning. Hey, I'm gonna let you sleep. Well, we're back, and it has been four weeks, I guess, since we last did the tuning on this guy. And uh, since then, I've just let it chill and I've played it a couple times. And uh, yeah, we're just about ready to tune this guy up. Let's set up some microphones and um, let's go through some tuning ranges with this guy. You might think that this sounds totally good. However, Actually, in terms of djembe standards, this is quite loose. You might be kind of surprised to know if you're not really into hand drumming, you just have a djembe as is right now, that typically djembes are tuned quite a bit higher than this. So what we're gonna do is set up some mics and we're gonna listen to this guy and I'm gonna go through weave for weave for weave, knot for knot, going up maybe one more time around the drum. I just wanna do that for you guys so you can you can hear the difference in tone and how it changes the character of the drum completely. Now, the important thing to remember with this guy here is that we wanna make sure that we do not overstretch this drum head. There's a good expression. Whenever you think like one more knot, that's usually right where you should stop because this is gonna get like tabletop hard. It's gonna get really, really high tuned. You also run the risk of ripping the head. So with this skin being as old as it is, I'm probably gonna be a little bit more cautious than I normally would be with like a thick goat skin. This is quite a thin calf skin and an old one to boot. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some demos and then I'm just gonna go up, not for not for not for not for not. Uh, continuing where we left off, I believe, where are we? There is the last knot we did 
Oh, and you can see now, like, do you remember how, how hard we had to talk, like, pull these guys tight? And just how loose they are now? Like, look how loose they are. Like, the skin is really stretched out. So I am thinking that here is the very last knot that we tied. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go up and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did, but instead of these two, or I should say these two verticals, we're now going to be tying these two, these two verticals, if you can see that here. We're gonna be making new verticals. And uh, you always wanna go like the outside ones, so like this one and that one it'll be. And, or sorry, it'll be these two. And we're gonna be making more Maui Wii's and diamonds and doing all that jazz. So anyway, um, I will show you the close-up of that once we get everything set up. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So here's where we left off last time. And I just put it, tucked it under these two just so I could get good hold. And now we're going to try and find these two here. And we just continue the cycle. So if we go like this under all three. That's a good place to start. So here's the, these two. I think that's correct. And then tie a knot. Maybe I can show that one more time. What I've done is I brought the rope. This was the last knot on the first time through. I've gone ahead and tied off that knot, pulled it tight, and now we're gonna go under three ropes. This one, this one, and this one, because these inner ones are now our new verticals, and that's gonna be the new diamond. This, this one here, this one's gonna be the last one between these two once we get through. Then all we got to do is keep that low. And then we do exactly what we've been doing this whole time. Is that we pull. And now we've got the second row of diamonds started already. Now that's going to be our newest diamond. See? Let me make like a little triangle. And now the next two are going to be these two. And we're going to continue around the drum. go there that is one knot okay all right let's see how it sounds now this is after one more knot okay So we continue. All it is is just same thing as before. 
under 2 over 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it under the next 2. Okay. It's going to be these two next, then these two, then these two, then these two, then those two here. And we're just going to keep going. Two. shake. I found the resonant frequency of the, the whole house. You guys can hear that if the, if the walls are shaking. after six.
tight still, but there's a little bit of give in it still. I think it sounds quite good though, you know. I'm going to resist the urge to go even higher and I think I'm just going to keep it here. I'm a little worried about the skin um, and I'm also worried about the summer. It's the fall now so it's going to get tighter and tighter as the summer approaches um, and we get back into warm weather and I'm going to bring this guy out. I think what I can do is I will keep it at this tightness right now. But I think I'm more than happy with this tightness. I think this will work just fine. I was hoping that maybe I could go a little bit higher, but seeing as this is such an old skin, I actually don't know if that's a good idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to leave this as is. Very last thing I need to do then, before we call this good, is just get rid of this excess rope. And all I'm gonna do, it's quite simple, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this down and put it somewhere through here maybe. Obviously this is just more of a personal preference thing now. Maybe I can squeeze it through there, but it doesn't matter because I can just put it through here. And then wrap this string around the djembe. Make sure it's tight. If you have enough, you can probably make a handle, but having such a short amount of rope left over, we're just gonna have to be okay with wrapping it around the drum a few times. Just bring it right up through here again. Okay, something like that. Find a little place we can just tuck this in. Just make sure it's out of the way. There, and then maybe one more. Just like that. And then maybe just back on itself. Just something to keep it out of the way. As the summer comes closer, Maybe we'll tighten it a little bit more, but for now, I think I'm more than happy with that. And there we go. <laughs> Something like that. So we ended up going with eight diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it sounds pretty good. Let's just take some final pictures and we'll call that a project well done. So there we go, reskinning a djembe and tuning it the way that I do at least. <laughs>